Hello everyone! The Burning Legion has invaded Azeroth once again, and priests are able to pick up three different artifacts to empower them in this war. For disciplined priests, it's going to be Light's Wrath, a powerful and dangerous weapon, if tales are to be believed. Light's Wrath was created by the Scarlet Crusade to create a second Ashbringer in the form of a staff. However, a Dreadlord who had infiltrated the Order intervened. He interrupted their efforts and triggered a violent magical explosion. The damaged staff's power proved nearly uncontrollable. After several wielders tried and failed to use the staff safely, the elite magi of the Kirintor hid it away to prevent further deadly calamities. They handed it to the Blue Dragonflight to secure away from the hands of men. Only they would know exactly where it was taken, so we're told to go and talk with the Blue Dragon Calicos, now a member of the Council of Six. From him, we learn that the staff was locked away within the Nexus Vault. He has not been there some time, however. After the Blue Dragon Flight was dissolved, the Nexus was all but abandoned. There's no knowing whether the Nexus Vault is still intact, or what may be waiting in the Nexus itself. Kaelic is aware of strange happenings in Caldera, and it would be best to understand them before proceeding. During his last visit to Dragonblight, he sensed unusual energies from the Azure Dragon Shrine. Since this place was part of Malagos' plans during the Nexus War, whatever is there may explain the current state of the Nexus. We get to investigate, but Kaelic can't join us in person since he has some Kieran Tor business to take care of, but he does give us an image crystal which he will use to communicate with us and help us out. At the Azure Dragon Shrine, we check out the clues as to what's going on, what that unusual energy is that he sensed. This device appears to draw upon the void energy released when Malagos forced Azeroth's ley lines into the twisting nether. The design looks very familiar. This portal is very similar to ones used by the ethereals in Outland. Could they be the threat? What did Malagos promise them? This weapon has been infused with dark energies from the twisting nether. Whoever wielded it must be seeking to harness void energy. But for what purpose? Yet more evidence of ethereal technology. This may be an unfortunate turn. There's only one way to find out who's really behind this. Who dares to... Ah, what have we here? Another intruder come to claim the treasures of the Nexus Vault. You are too late. Even now the powers within the Vault serve to widen the breach into the Twisting Nether. With this power, the Ethereum will become unstoppable. WE WILL BECOME VOID! So it's the Ethereum that has taken the Nexus, and yet, that seems the least of our worries. Their plans to widen the breach into the Twisted Nether, it poses a threat to all of Azeroth. Now, not only do we have our weapon to recover, we must also put a stop to the Ethereum as well. Our journey takes us to the Nexus, and it's quite a trip, so plenty of time to give a little bit of background information as to what this is all about. The Nexus War, that was a war around the time of Wrath the Lich King, in which Malagos, the Blue Dragon Aspect and Guardian of Magic, he had recovered from his insanity, and he realized that during his absence, the use of magic had greatly increased, and in his eyes was being abused. To solve this, he started to draw in the ley lines into the Nexus, and ley lines are lines of power that run all across Azeroth. People started to notice this end fight back, even the Red Dragonflight realized that what the Blue Dragon Aspect was doing was not the right thing, and they fought out their war. From this artifact quest, we learned that Malagos also recruited the Ethereum, and the Ethereum is a faction amongst the race of Ethereals that comes from a planet called Karen. They didn't always look like the mummy creatures as we see them today, but Karesh came under siege by Dementius the All Devouring, who unleashed his Void army upon their world, opening countless of gateways into the Void and the Twisted Nether around the planet. The people of Karesh tried to shield themselves with magical barriers, but although the dark energies were blocked, the flood of arcane magic tore away at them and infused their souls with enough energy to transform them into the Ethereals as we see them today. This change also enhanced their minds and magical abilities, allowing them to fight the 
Dimensius and his limited forces to a standstill. But over the years, Dimensius grew powerful enough to summon more armies of fellow Void creatures, forcing the Ethereals to flee into the Twisted Nether and eventually show up on Outlands, where we helped them out with bringing Dimensius down. It seems like they have plans with the Void, the Twisted Nether and the Nexus. From their experience on Karesh, they've learned that they can gain a lot from powers of these realms and apparently Malago's actions have torn rifts which they plan to use to their advantage. We can't let that happen, so as we arrive at the Nexus, we check out the place and we see what we can do. Whatever the Ethereals are up to is generating an incredible amount of Void energy. They must be using Malagos' Surge Needles. Fly over to one and let's take a closer look. The Ethereum have altered the Surge Needles. They are tapping into Void Energy caused by the Rift. Their power must also be feeding the shield around the Nexus. Let us take a look at the Foundation. The Vault must be weakened. The energy from your weapon is breaking its way free. This may work to our advantage. The energy from Light's Wrath is lashing out of the weakened Nexus Vault, and we can turn this raw chaotic energy to our advantage by harnessing it and feeding it into the Surge Needles. It will create a rather destructive reaction, so as we go about doing that, let's talk a little bit more about the history of the weapon that we're here to claim. Years ago, the fanatical Scarlet Crusade sent out to create a staff of unparalleled holy might. A weapon that will rival even the legendary Ashbringer in its righteous fury. The Ashbringer derived its power from a shadowy artifact that had purified in the light and affixed to the blade. The Scarlet Crusade sought to do the same for its staff. The Order sent its most loyal crusaders into the war torn plague lands in search of a suitable relic. The few who returned bore a strange jewel bristling with darkness. Some sources say that it had been part of a truncheon carried by one of the first death knights to walk the world, while other accounts, they hint that the dreaded Lich Kelfuzad had shaped the jewel with his spectral hands. Whatever the truth, the crusade would use the black gem to create the staff known as Light's Raw. Ten of the Scarlet Crusade's learned priests gathered in Hearthclan to create Light's Raw. For weeks, they practiced a ritual that would purify the dark jewel and bind it to the staff. What they never accounted for was a demon in their midst. A Nafrezim or Dreadlord named Belnazar had infiltrated the crusade and assumed the identity of its leader, Satan Davrohan. When the demon learned of the plans to forge Light Roth, he feared that such a weapon could unmask his deception and shatter his hold over the crusade. Belnazar disrupted the cleansing ritual and the crusaders they lost control of their delicate spellwork. A storm of holy energy ripped through the meaning place, instantly killing the ten priests. Yet Light's wrath was left intact. The blast had actually purified the jewel and affixed it to the staff. Upon close inspection, Belnazar found that the staff trembled with unstable energies. Wielding it with any reliability would be near impossible. Now rather than destroy the weapon, the demon allowed the Scarlet Crusade to keep it. He looked forward to the mayhem it would cause in the years to come. The Crusade tried to wield the weapon against the Scourge, but Belnazar had been right. The weapon was unstable and often not only hit the Scourge, but also the forces fighting against them. A letter from Grand Inquisitor Isilian to High General Appendus recalls an encounter at Tears hand, in which the Scourge outnumbered their righteous warriors 20 to 1. It would have been a massacre if not for Light's Wrath. The staff's blazing light carved through the Scourge like a scythe through wheat, leaving none behind. It is true that Light's Wrath killed his wielder and many of the soldiers at his side. It is also true that the surviving crusaders have been left dumbstruck, unable to dress or feed themselves without assistance. To Isilian though, a ratio of 20 to 1, he considered such losses acceptable. There's also the reports of Isren of the Kirentor, who was trying to track down the weapon. Detected another explosion of holy energy in the plague lands, the fifth in the last year. This recent disaster bears all the similarities of the others. Light's Wrath is to blame. From what I can gather, the Scarlet Crusade raided the small village in search of the Scourge. They used Light's Wrath to cleanse the living townsfolk, thinking that they were affected by the plague of undeath. This went on for some time before the priest using the staff lost control of its power. What was once the town square is now nothing more than a smoldering crater filled to the brim with bodies. As before, the weapon was gone by the time I arrived. Some other fool crusader likely has it. I should have never volunteered for this task. Of all the Scarlet Crusaders who bore Light's Wrath, Inquisitor Halbin had the greatest chance of success. His discipline and calculated focus were unmatched among the Order's members. In the Scarlet Monastery, Halbin put the Stahl's power to use, torturing forsaken prisoners. He seared his captives with holy fire, extracting information for the Crusade to utilize in its war against the undead. 
the more Halbin interacted with the Forsaken, the more he grew to loathe the cursed beings. He no longer cared about gathering intelligence from them, he simply wanted to hear their screams. During one night of feverish torture, Halbin's anger overwhelmed his thoughts. His hold over Lysroth slipped. It was only for an instant, and that was all it took to seal the Inquisitor's doom. An explosion rocked the torture chamber and engulfed Halbin in holy fire. It is said he died a slow death, his howls of agony ringing through the monastery for days on end. It is unknown exactly when Lysroth slipped between the Scarlet Crusade's fingers, but eventually the staff fell to the care of a priest named Jakar. The devout troll was a member of the Horde's expedition, a mighty force sent to wage war against the Scourge in Northrend. Aboard a zeppelin en route to the warfront, Jakar practiced harnessing Lysroth. She dreamed of smiting the Scourge with the weapon, of making the undead pay for all the lives they had destroyed. Over Northrend, a fierce storm knocked the Zeppelin from the sky, and the airship plummeted to the icy tundra. Though every passenger did survive the crash, they had no time to celebrate. They had landed deep within Scourge's territory. Jakar's intense training paid off. She wielded light Rolf with precision and decimated the Scourge. Under her guidance, the Horde fighters carved a path through the enemy lines, and they reached safety. In Northrend, she became known as the Bane of the Scourge. She purified the land of undead, with light Rolf leaving a trail of holy fire where ever she went. Her heroics earned her high praise from the horse commanders, but Jakar was not satisfied with words alone. No matter how many members of the Scourge that she destroyed, it was never enough. Jakar always wanted more. She became single-minded in her quest, often putting her horde allies at risk. Though she cleansed more and more undead, there was a price. With each day that passed, thoughts of retribution consumed her, and the iron hold over Light's wrath began to slip. Isran of the Kirin Tor was still searching for a weapon and made the following reports. Another incident, this time in Northrend. A whore priest named Jakar found the staff. By all accounts, very knowledgeable in the light. Remarkably, she used the weapon for some time against the Scourge before the accident. Jakar led a small force of Horde deep within the Scourge lines. The priest wreaked havoc on the undead before she lost control of Light's Wall. A lance of holy magic erupted from the weapon, injuring the Horde soldiers and permanently blinding Jakar. They barely made it back alive. The troll seems quite humble by the ordeal. She has vowed to spend the remainder of the war using her powers to heal rather than to destroy. Regarding the staff, she and the other soldiers abandon it while retreating from Scourge territory. If I have any luck at all, the weapon will be where they left it, out there in the wastes. Good thing I packed my winter robes. After Jakar abandoned the staff in Northrend, Lysroth somehow found its way back to the Eastern Kingdoms. The staff passed from one owner to the next. Kind-hearted priests and paladins bore the weapon to heal the sick and protect the innocent, but none could wield it for very long. In time, the mysterious Dark Riders learned of its whereabouts. These hooded horsemen originated from the Tower of Karazhan, cursed by the corrupted Guardian Medivh, their forced to spend their days stalking the land, procuring artifacts and relics of great power. A Dark Rider named Eridan was the first to try to take up Light's Wrath, and he was the last. The moment his cursed hand touched the staff, a wave of holy energy erupted from the weapon. So pure was the magic that it drove the Dark Rider away and sent them slinking back to the Haunted Tower. It was one of the few artifacts they would ever willingly abandon, perhaps even the only one. And then we have another report from Isra'en. Praise the light, the staff is finally in my grasp. I tricked Light's Wrath to the cultist of the Twilight's Hammer. They had recovered the staff and were planning to reverse the purification ritual performed on it some years ago. In doing so, the cultist would have transformed Light's Wrath into its antithesis, a weapon of pure darkness. I stormed the Twilight's Hammer encampment just before the cultists completed the ritual. Their resistance was short-lived and I dealt with them quite handedly. Far be it from me to brag, though I think I have earned the right to it after this mad quest. Expect me in Daladon shortly with this blasted staff. He did earn the right to brag a little bit, but sadly, Isran would never finish his quest. This final bit of information about the weapon, it comes from an untitled missive from the Kirator archives with an unknown author. I report with great sadness that Isran has perished. While preparing Light's Wrath for transport to Daladan, he inadvertently triggered its powers. It seems the spell he cast to lock the staff in a protective shield caused an explosion of holy energy. I know this comes as quite a shock. Isran was always an attentive and calculating man. He knew more about the staff than any of us, but perhaps that knowledge made him careless. We have taken precautions so that we do not repeat his mistake. Seven Magi have sealed Light's Wrath in dampening runes. We will arrive in Daladan soon to deposit the staff in the Nexus Vault. 
Lights. Now from this information we learn that Lights Rolf has quite the explosive history. Let their shortcomings serve as a lesson and a warning. Noble intentions are not enough to harness this star's formidable power. You must sharpen your focus to a blade's edge and make your will as unyielding as steel. For the moment, your discipline falters. This weapon will claim you as it has all others. So let's make sure that that won't happen as we finish our task. The shadow has lifted. What little mind is this I sense that has freed my consciousness from the ethereal's trap? The search needles have been destroyed and the blue dragon Azurigo's consciousness was apparently trapped by the ethereals. When Devon was defeated, the dragons lost a bunch of their power and became mortal. The dragonflies had to figure out what their place was in this world, what their role would be, which is why we don't see them around the nexus anymore, but apparently Azurigo's, he has returned to secure the vault once more. Melagos always trusted him to watch over the magical artifacts in the care of the flight, so if anyone can help us get the weapon, it would be him. So, the lock on the nexus has been broken. And by a common adventurer, no less, huh. will wonders never cease. If you've come to engage me in battle in hopes of obtaining some spurious trinket, I'm afraid you're too late. The Ethereum have taken the bite out of this old dragon, and I fear they have robbed me of anything you would deem useful. If it's looting you desire, as your kind so often does, then I suggest taking the fight to them. Wait, are you here after them? In that case, I could use a hand. Ah, you are a capable healer, priest. I feel my strength returning. I assume you come seeking the Nexus Vault. Why else would anyone return to this place? Unfortunately, access to the Vault is proving... difficult. If you help me access the Librarium, I will find a way through. We must not let the Ethereum obtain the artifacts it holds. But first, I think I'll slip into a more comfortable form. These halls were never quite spacious enough for my tastes. Shall we? We need to reach the Librarium, but the weapon has become very chaotic and is lashing out all over the place. Using our special abilities, we get around the Nexus, while also defeating anyone and anything that stands in our way, until we reach our destination. We're here! Now let me see if I can find a way into the vault. As I suspected, the entrance to the vault was broken off when Malagos breached the Twisting Nether during the Nexus Wars. I feel the powers it holds resonating through the Nexus. There must be another way to reach the vault. Aha! That's... Wait a moment. The energy from the vault is surging! Brace yourself! Judgment's flame has appeared to prevent us from reaching the vault and it's using its own life essence to attack, but hurting himself in the process. If we keep this up long enough, he might actually kill himself. Clever! He's absorbing the flame back into his body to become whole again. Priest, perhaps you can use your magic to influence his mind. Trick him into snuffing out his own flame. We use our powers to dominate the creature's mind and force it beyond its limits. More and more of its very life essence is tapped out. You can almost hear it scream. No, please stop. Not like this. But we don't care. Our discipline is unrivaled as we force this poor creature to kill itself. That was too close. If the weapon goes unchecked much longer, it will bring this whole place down around us. Quickly, we must head to the rift. It's the only way. Wait, didn't there used to be a bridge here? Fools! You may have destroyed the Surge Needles, but you are too late to stop us. The power of Light's Wrath will rip open the breach! Oh great, more Ethereals. It looks like they're channeling the energy from the vault into the breach. This is not good. Come! Time to show these ethereals that I still have a bit of fight left in me. Ah! 
I will bring whatever power I have to bear against the Nexus Prince. But in my weakened state, it falls upon you to finish this threat. I hope you are prepared. You are too late, interlopers. Nothing can stop me now. I have become void! Bilal has stepped into the Twisted Nether, absorbed enough energy, and has changed his arcane-infused form into that of a creature of the void. Now I've done a more detailed video about this, but in short, at the beginning of it all there was light and then there came void. These two forces clashed together and from that explosion the Warcraft universe as we know it came to be. As the universe formed the most chaotic energies, they formed into an astral dimension known as the Twisted Nether where light and void bled together, throwing it in turmoil. Now this information is from the Chronicles, so it's still pretty new and a little bit vague to place in with already established lore, but like I said, check out the video linked down below if you want more details. Now those to check out all the videos that I upload, you might have realized by now that this artifact quest is pretty much copy paste from the RK Mage artifact quest. I'm not really sure where the connection to the discipline comes from besides the Nexus being a good place to store dangerous artifacts, but that could also be used pretty much for any artifact like they've done with Karazhan. A connection that you could make is that discipline priests, they walk the line between holy and shadow, between holy and the void. Considering that the Ethereum go full blown into the void, that kind of relates to the clause to the artifact but I have to admit, it is pretty weak. For Bilal, he desperately tries to use his newfound powers against us, push us off the platform, all that good stuff, but with Azura Ghost flying up above, we're able to overpower him and bring him down. What? The Void cannot be defeated! No! Ha! Ha ha! So much for the all-powerful Void! <laughs> you know you're not a bad ally. Pity you're not a dragon. I can open a portal to the vault, but I'll have to remain on this side to keep it open. The way is clear. Hurry, little one. I can't keep this open for long. You made it, but to leave this place with the weapon, you must first gain control of it. Good luck. Inside the Nexus Vault, the weapon stands waiting in the middle, but it won't be claimed that easily. Righteous Fury shoots out the weapon, and we have to not just stand there and hope for the best like an idiot, but actually use our abilities to keep ourselves alive while claiming dominance. Our discipline is stronger than any who came before, and Light's Wrath eventually yields. Well done. The energies from the vault seem to be stabilizing. Now hurry back before the portal closes and you're locked inside. I am impressed. Never have I seen a priest capable of controlling Light's wrath. The ethereals have been routed, and you have the weapon you came for. Your business here is finished. Mine, on the other hand, has just begun. I thank you for freeing me. You have given me the greatest gift of all. That of time. I will use that time to secure the Nexus. It must never again fall into the wrong hands. This portal will take you back to Kalagos. Please give him my regards. Azuragos is going to stay behind and keep an eye on things. I guess that his relationship with the spirit healer is truly over and done with, giving him some extra free time to do stuff like this. Disciplined Priest will now wield Light's Wrath in the war against the Legion and their adventures through the Broken Isles. It's a bit of a shame that the Artifact Quest and even their Order Hall campaign couldn't be more unique, but this is where we'll end the story for today, so thank you very much for watching everyone. As always, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!